The interaction between unmanned aircraft, ground control, and pilots is fast becoming one of the Army's most effective tools. Unmanned, unmanned teaming, we've defined four levels from you just receive the video off the unmanned system into the manned aircraft to both platforms being able to transfer the sensor data from, from the manned and the unmanned back and forth and down to the ground. Um, the next level up is the operators of the manned aircraft controlling the payload or the sensor on the unmanned vehicle so they can make it look where they want it to look, which simplifies operation. And the most advanced way to implement manned unmanned teaming is that the manned aircraft actually controls the unmanned vehicle, not just the sensor, but the whole vehicle. Basically, the control on the Block 3 aircraft is the first manned platform to, to be able to do level 2 through level 4 control, which means you can not only receive the video from the UAS, but you can control the UAS's sensor, you can control the navigation of where the uh, UAS goes. And so really, if you think about it from an operational sense, the, uh, the Block 3 crew will no longer have to uh, hear uh, someone talk them onto a target because a picture's worth a thousand words. Pilots flying the Apache Block 3 are actually able to fly an unmanned aircraft like the Army's Gray Eagle and the Shadow right from the cockpit of the Apache. What's unique about uh, the, the Army UAVs is you don't really fly them. You, you tell it where you want it to go, and it, it, it flies itself. It's on an automatic uh, control, if you will, an autopilot. So different sort of from the Air Force UAVs where they actually fly them. We just tell them where we want them to go. And, the UAV and the Block 3 aircraft actually share a database of control measures or uh, waypoints. So I can simply, with a couple of button pushes, tell the UAV that I want it to go to a certain waypoint. And the UAV flies there. I can change its altitude, I can change its airspeed, and really via a couple of uh, button pushes on the aircraft, I can send it wherever I want it to go. You don't actually fly it. You just tell it where to go. That capability can provide invaluable information for pilots in the air and soldiers on the ground. So the man-on-man -man teaming works in several ways. The way I like to describe it is, is, is the hunting dog out in front of the hunter. When you know what's on the ground before you get there, when you know what, what your targets look like, when you know what the terrain looks like before you get there, it's a big advantage for that manned aviator. In addition, now with the incorporation of the laser designation, our UAVs can laze for a target and then they can shoot their Hellfire missiles from a great distance, sometime without ever seeing the targets. Once those targets are engaged, then they can do battle damage assessment, all without ever flying over it and putting themselves in harm's way. So that's, that's a very big, big advantage in my opinion. The manned-unmanned operating system is intended to work seamlessly between manned aircraft, UAVs, and a UAV ground station. So why is interoperability important? Um, it's, it goes back to, to now that we've grown and are at all echelons of the Army, from small all the way to the big Gray Eagle, which is the Army's biggest UAV, to be able to talk the same language, to be able to share the same videos, to send the same messages up to the airplane and back, and to those, those same messages and photos, as well as full motion video to the tactical edge or to our UAV recipients. Um, it's very important that we all have universal or interoperable products and standards. The Army recently had the chance to demonstrate this cutting edge technology at MUSIC, the Army's manned, unmanned systems integration capability exercise at Dugway Proving Grounds in Utah. All of the music exercises are focused on getting new capabilities integrated into the platforms and out to the soldier. In the old days, so to speak, you know, we would look at a map and we would do as much map reconnaissance as we possibly could and we would try to understand, you know, looking at pictures, what it is that we're getting into. But now, literally with an unmanned aircraft vehicle overhead looking at that landing zone in real time, that helicopter pilot is going to be able to know exactly what's going on, know exactly where he's going to land, and uh, there, there should be less room for surprise. Sure, I want you to keep eyes on him. Let me know if you lose sight if he's headed towards my direction. I'll go ahead and fall back. Right now, I'm trying to get eyes on. So obviously the benefit for the soldier on the ground is now he's got a level of situational awareness that he didn't have before that just, you know, really enables him to truly understand the situation that he's about to get, get into. And, uh, and that's just, that's really a game changer for the, for the Army. I mean, it's a huge capability that, that we didn't have in the past.